Hey, what's up? Joe Joe in the morning. I hope you are having a great Friday. Hey, if you've been flowing with the prophetic this week and you've been hearing the Lord and you've got some testimonies today, I want you to write it in the comments below. I want you to, to write down some, some good things. I've heard some amazing stories this week about how people have really tapped in, heard the Lord, moved forward, and, and seen things happen, okay? I absolutely love testimonies. That's how people are changed, what the Word says. People are changed by the blood of the Lamb, the Word of our testimony. And so it's, it's just good. You know, I remember there was a time when uh, we were really newlyweds and finances were like super tight and, and Autumn was still in college and I was working a few jobs and she was working, I think, 40 hours a week and going to college and we were youth pastors. And I just remember one time, I was just like, God, I don't know, I'm going to pay for everything. And I just kind of felt the Lord, it was like, sow a seed. And I said, okay, whew, I'm just trying to pay my bills. I didn't understand finances like I do now. But, but I remember I was like, sow a seed. And so I did. Everything started working out. Everything started working out. I stood on a word from the Lord. I remember the first time I was preaching um, in, in a meeting and the Lord said, stop the service and, and pray for that guy to get out of that wheelchair. First time I did it, it I, he walked. He got out of the wheelchair and walked. But I remember listening to the Holy Spirit stopping. I remember countless times I was in Walmart walking down an aisle and the Lord said, stop and prophesy over that person right now. Or at, at Walmart, and they'll say, buy that person's groceries. And all of a sudden, they broke down crying. And like, you had no idea. I'm down to my last $100, so I'm trying to figure out what I can buy for $100. And I said, let me buy this 100 right here, then you go get, get another one. And they said, you, you don't understand. We were already planning on missing meals this week. I listened to the Holy Spirit. And, and so when, when, when other people hear these testimonies, uh, I have somebody recently who shared a phenomenal, phenomenal story with me, but they were really providing for their family, but it wasn't enough, so they were going to take a side job. And the Holy Spirit spoke to them and said, I don't want you to take a side job because you need to be with your family because their kids are little. So the guy got a miracle seed, finances, sold it. He needed money. But the Lord said, so he sowed a, a miracle seed in, into a ministry. And then all of a sudden he gets a promotion at work, working the same hours, making the same money he would make at that job and that side job if he would have took it. But because he felt the Lord say, sow a seed, he did, everything shifted. Testimonies, testimonies. I can't tell you how many times I, I, I've been preaching and and, and I would just, and God would highlight one person. I would just stop and prophesy the word of the Lord. You know, you got a few hundred people in a service or something. You just stop and prophesy. You don't know any of these people. Um, and then their life is radically shifted. Sometimes when I, when I first started doing that, I was like, I'm preaching a message. You want me to stop and just, just, just flow? And it was, yeah, why not? Man, we, we got to learn we got to learn how to flow in life, flow in restaurants, flow at grocery stores, flow at the ballpark, flow wherever we go, flowing in the prophetic, moving in the prophetic, and just flowing with the things of the Lord. Second Corinthians 13, 14, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Main thing that I want to break out in that scripture is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. When we have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, some people are struggling to hear the Holy Spirit. They're needing somebody to hear the Holy Spirit for them. You can be sitting there talking to somebody. Like I can't tell you how many times in my life I've been, 
counseling somebody and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and I said something and they're like, wow, that's exactly what I needed to hear. And I'm like, hey, it was not me. It was, it was the Holy Spirit speaking through me to you. Understand that it was not me. It was the Holy Spirit. I can't tell how many times when I was young and growing and when I first got ministry, I was under a gentleman, my first cousin actually, Pastor Hal Haltom, and we'd be talking and he would go, kind of have this look on his face. I feel the Lord is saying, and he would just say a word from the Holy Spirit. And I'd be like, whoa, that's exactly what I needed to hear. You know, my apostle, Kim Malone, same thing. Time would be on the phone and he would just say something. Wow. You, listen, flow with the presence and the power of God. When you have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, it's not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit speaking through you. That's how you can transform lives. That's how we see a shift in a lot of things that we, we need to see a shift in. It is out of our fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Galatians 6 and 9, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Now let me ask you, how many prophetic words have you received that haven't manifested yet? Now, don't you dare word curse your own prophetic word. I see people all the time saying, oh, I don't think that's ever going to come to pass. Well, it's probably not now. <laughs> um, I don't even know if that was the Lord when I got that last year. Well, you're not going to do it now. You, you, you got to not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, you're going to reap it, okay? If you sowed the seed, you're going to reap it. Now, when I was little... And I was little boy, I used to love planting watermelons. One of my granddads would come over and we'd till up the ground. I had a little garden in the backyard. And man, I mean, I'd plant those watermelon seeds and I got down by the ground staring at it. My granddad said, Jojo, it, it's not going to grow that fast, okay? We went in and had dinner. I came back out. I was staring at it. He said, Jojo, look, it, it's, it's not, it's not going to come up tonight, okay? That next morning I woke up, I was out there. That next night I was out that next morning and I just kept on and on and on and on and on and I forgot about it, just kind of gave up on it. One day I kind of walked back out there and you know what? It had started to grow, but some animals or birds or something got into it and kind of destroyed it. But then like if I would have stayed looking ready, prepared, when it came I could have put something over it, nurtured it, took care of it. But I didn't because I gave up on it because it didn't happen as fast as I wanted it to happen, okay? We're microwave people. God's a crock pot cooking God, okay? <laughs> and so we got to understand that when you plant good seed, you will reap a harvest. My wife and I, we encourage each other daily. You know, like in the mornings we wake up after we have our quiet time. I'll be like, I don't know, Autumn, but I feel like we're on the verge of the greatest breakthrough of our life. She says, Joe, I can feel it. I mean, I can feel like it's going to come today. I feel like something's going to happen. I feel our breakthrough is going to be so big that we're going to be able to do a lot of the dreams that we have. We're going to help a whole lot of people. Like, like We actually have a list of people that we want to give financial blessings to. You know, some of the people we don't even really like that much, but the Lord has already put on our heart that when you're blessed extravagantly, there's people I want you to bless. I want you to give to certain people. And you know what? It, it's really not our money. Even when we receive it, it's really not ours. It's the Lord's. And so I'm telling you, if you don't grow weary, you're going to reap. Just like those watermelon seeds when I was little. If I would have kept watching, as soon as they started popping that ground, I would have saw and I could have put a little something around it. But I gave up on it. A lot of times you give up on stuff and when your breakthrough's there, you're not there to nurture it. You're not there. I remember, <laughs> I remember I had this friend, and there was this one job that he wanted where he worked. 
he just thought that would be his dream job. And he would always say, hey, you know, um, if that job you know, ever comes open, I want it, I want it. And uh, he, he just, he would have been great for the job. And he just kept saying it. And one day he said, you know what, man, I'm just, I'm going to go get this this other job at this other place. I'm, I'm not going to wait on it anymore. And he went and got that other job. Two weeks later, we were talking to a guy. And the guy said, man, I just got a promotion. And we're like, oh, cool. What happened? <laughs> he said, well, about a week after you left, that job came open. And since you weren't there, they gave it to me. <laughs> now, he has a good job, but he's just like, man, like just like a week, he missed it. If you don't grow weary in the prophetic words God gave you, they're going to come to pass in the right season. Keep praying, keep prophesying. Keep making fresh declarations over those words. They're going to come to pass and you're going to have your breakthrough, my friends, okay? It's going to happen for you. It's going to happen for you. So don't lose heart. Don't, don't stop prematurely. Remember the prophetic things God has spoken to. And there's a lot of times when I go to prayer, I say this, Holy Spirit, Show me things that I've already forgot that you said that I failed to write down. Let me remember them by the Holy Spirit so I can pray them through. And God will show you those things. My friends, I believe we're on the verge of a lot of great things um, in America and the nations of the world. So stay in there. Keep praying. Keep believing. Keep prophesying. Keep declaring. Because we're in a, a very, very good season, okay? So I hope this helped. Love you guys. And if you need prayer, go to the website, jojodawson.net. Send me a prayer request. I would love to pray for you, all right? Love you guys.